What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to make this 3D gritty typography effect in Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop and Cinema 4D. Alright, so before we actually start off the video, if you want to get the project file for this and all of my other tutorials, you can do that by becoming a patron of mine. Click on the link down in the description or stick around until the end of the video. Alright, so a little while ago I asked my followers to send me some designs on Twitter and I would see if I could make it and I would see if I could make a tutorial about them. So you see a couple here that uh, I'm actually going to do, but I'm gonna do them later. Salinger uh, sent me this typography thing. It looked pretty cool and I thought, I think I know how to make this, so yeah, let's just try it. So just in case, I don't know who made this. So if someone knows, can you let me know in the comments so I can put the link in the description of the original artist. So there's quite some interesting stuff going on here and I think we need three tools to make this. Uh, Illustrator, Photoshop and Cinema 4D. And Cinema 4D can be pretty much replaced by any other 3D software. Uh, I think you can even do this with Blends and Illustrator uh, as well as just doing some hand drawing. But for the case of this video, I'm gonna do it the easy way and use 3D for this. So let's take one more look at my end result. And I think it's pretty similar. There's probably uh, something different going on with the grain, but I think I came pretty close. So the way I started out is I basically just drew something simple uh, I basically carved this letter T out of like uh, a square if you can see it's fairly simple and what I really liked about the original design is that it had softened edges so yeah I went for that as well uh, I then adjusted the thickness to a setting of light in my case 10 points I'm using a canvas of 400 by 400 pixels by the way so in order to get this ready for 3d we basically need to outline this and make it so cinema 4d can open this illustrator file so the way we're gonna do that is basically select this whole thing and under the stroke menu, we are going to make sure that the aligned stroke is on the outside. This basically makes the bends uh, a little bit larger, I guess. So the next thing we're gonna do is go to object, path, outline stroke. And if we press Ctrl or Command Y on our keyboard now, you can see that we actually made a shape of the uh, original thing that we had. Uh, so it's now outlined with the stroke and everything. So the next step is basically save this thing up so that Cinema 4D can open it. And we're gonna do that by going to file, save as and before we click ok in this window here uh, you want to go to version and click on illustrator 8 and then click ok so now you're basically good to go and drag this thing into cinema 4d all right so let's take a look this is the cinema 4d setup that we have here i'm actually going to redo this so you can follow along okay so the first thing we want to do is go to file merge project and we'll click the illustrator file that we just made and this window comes up and we'll just click ok and now in the coordinates, I'm going to reset the position and I'm going to scale this up by 10 times. And as you can see, this is basically the 3D version of the uh, lines that we made in Illustrator. So I'm going to add an extrude to this to make it into a 3D object. I'm holding Alt or Option on my keyboard to immediately make the extrude uh, a parent of our letter here. All right, so we're gonna to go to object under the extrude menu. We're gonna click on the Z direction here. And this is pretty much already good to go. So looking at the octane render window here, you can kind of already see uh, the effect that we are wanting to go for here. All right, but let's set up the render file first. Just setting up my render settings here and just, uh, if it's simple PNG and an alpha channel, and I'm gonna actually uh, change the width and the height of this project to a square. So we're gonna add an octane camera here and I'm actually gonna make sure that this lines up perfectly with the rest here. All right, so actually under the coordinates, I'm gonna place my camera 2000 centimeters away from uh, our object. And it's gonna look pretty small, but because once we change the focal length to 500, uh, the camera's actually coming closer. And the reason I'm doing this is to keep these lines a little bit more straight once this thing starts rotating. So under the extrude, let's rotate this thing minus 10 degrees. And as you can see, now when it's rotating, uh, well, the direction of this uh, isn't really coming that much closer to the camera, uh, which will result in this having a little bit more of a 2D look than a 3D look, if that makes sense. All right, so um, I just grabbed another camera with another focal distance to show you the difference, basically. So this is what we had, and this is what we don't really want. As you can see, you can kind of see that the uh, front here is tilting, and that has to do with the focal length. So yeah, let's just go back to the original view. All right, so now uh, let's move our camera a little bit to the right here so that the object still looks centered, I guess. And under the settings of the octane render, let's just check alpha channel and uncheck keep environment. And looking at this, we are pretty close to what we want. Uh, one thing I'm gonna add is a light object. So uh, basically I'm gonna go to object, add an area light, move this thing back a little bit and make it invisible for the camera. 
and we'll power down the light a little bit and the more we power down this light the more we're gonna see okay that the uh, edges here are white and that the shadow isn't and that's kind of the effect that we're going for so something like this should do the trick uh, well, let's render this out all right so we're in photoshop and i basically just imported this thing uh, on a black background and the last part we need if we look at our reference here uh, is that this thing has an inner glow on almost every side so that's what i'm going to try to do as well going to layer layer style inner glow okay so i've reset my settings to default so you can follow along so i'm going to slide the opacity to 100 percent and up the size a little bit and basically now let's play around with the range until we have something that we like and i think i'm going to leave mine around here and actually also going to add a curve adjustment layer just to add some more contrast into this So something like this should do the trick. All right, so one last step that we wanna do is go to filter, noise, add noise. And an amount of 10% should do the trick. And now we basically wanna go to image, mode, grayscale. And this asks us if you wanna merge every layer and we're just gonna click okay because we're gonna go into bitmap mode later. And basically bitmap mode destroys all the layer styles and smart filters and everything that we have here anyway. So let's just click merge. So what we're gonna do is go to image once again, go to mode and click on bitmap. And I'm gonna click okay because it's okay to flatten our layers. We're gonna leave the output and the input exactly the same and the method we're gonna use is diffusion dither. And we're gonna go click okay. And voila, this is looking pretty close of course. However, this is looking a little bit too sharp. So what we can do is go to image, mode and we'll go back to grayscale again. And this kind of fixes it already, but maybe we want to, you know, leave this a little bit and what we're going to do is go to filter pixelate mosaic and we're going to go with a cell size of three and this of course diffuses the pixels a little bit and gives you some gray values as well if you are still thinking okay this is a little bit too much we can also just change the image size so the image size that I've been using is a 3000 by 3000 pixel canvas with a resolution of 72 dpi. So I hope this tutorial was useful. I hope I came pretty close to the result. If you have any further tutorial requests, you can also just leave them in the comments down below. So before we end of the video, I just want to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. Thanks to my patrons, I'm actually able to do this full time and keep up the weekly videos for you guys. As a thank you for becoming a patron, you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, a 15% discount in my asset web store, as well as an exclusive Discord role on the Dreadlabs Discord server. If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to exclusive tutorials, such as how to start your own clothing brand, as well as how to create your own death metal logo from scratch. So yeah, if this is something you're interested in, there's a link down in the description. And if you don't want to become a patron, you can still support the channel by leaving a like, a comment and a subscribe if you have not with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.